All right, so by the end of today's lesson, you will be able to mix your tracks to create a finished product. So you'll be able to put a nice mix onto your tracks um, by using the methods that we're going to discuss. First of all, a couple things that you do need to know. Um, first of all, if you notice here, you had your track output. So this is each individual track's audio output signal. So if you notice, if I play, and I'll just play a solo one and play just this one here. You can see how loud it is. And if I turn this slider down, turn the volume off, if I raise it all the way up here, I make it louder. Now you can see here that you want to stay in the green at all times. Now you can blip to the red every once in a while. And that's a little too much. But notice here, every once in a while we blip up, but for the most part we stay where we need to stay. That's okay, but you don't want to be in the red all the time. Like if we were all the way up. That's called clipping, clipping, C-L-I-P-P-I-N-G. And if you listen to, the, to that on real speakers, not these computer speakers, you would hear that it distorts or fragments the track. So um, it's something that you definitely want to avoid at all times. So you always want to set your volume sliders here so that it's in the red. The general rule of thumb is you should start all, when you're going to mix a piece, start all your sliders at zero and go from there. Zero being the highest. Most of the time when you're at zero for a lot of the stuff, unless it's recorded poorly with, with people being too close to the mic and everything else, that, but that's another way down the road for us, it, it should be okay around zero. But notice, let's look at all the sliders now to see if, if we have clipping going on on any of these individual tracks. For the most part, you're, we're good. You do see a, a couple blips over here. You may want to trim this down just a little bit. But once we set this all to zero, then we can start the actual process of mixing. One other thing I want to show you is down here is your master level output. This is your output for the entire project. And you definitely want to make sure this doesn't stay in the red. Let's look down here. Yeah, notice it's hanging out in the red because it's too loud. A lot of times kids will turn this up to hear the project better, but in, in this is not where you want to turn it up. You want to turn it up up here. If you leave this up like this all the way and you go to listen to it on speakers and you bla and turn those speakers up, it's going to sound um, compressed and um, or it's going to sound clipped and it's going to sound distorted and you're not going to want that. So you want to make sure this isn't in the red. And you want to put this as high as you can without it going to the red. So right there we kind of have it going to the red. So right now we shouldn't have any red here or any red here. And again, if it blips up every once in a while, that's not a huge deal. You just don't want it to stay up. And then you want to try to avoid the blips, but sometimes it's not possible. So once you set these levels, then your job is going to be to, to basically let the listener know by the way you mix it, what it is exactly you want them to hear. What do you want the predominant voice to be? What do you want to kind of something to be in the background? What, what should be in the background? What should be driving that individual section? And if you're going to do, you can either do it if it's for the whole piece, you can just do it with the sliders. Like if I were doing this piece mixing this little thing I threw together quickly. I would think that I want a little more drum beat if I can get it. And it looks like... Looks like I can get a little bit softer. I'm going to throw the loop thing on so this always goes back in the loops for me. So let's move this back a little bit here. I'm going to turn the bass up. If I have room, I'll get it up a little bit. Make sure it's not clipping. And then the synth I'm going to turn down a little bit. I think it's too predominant. 
So I think now I've established a nice mix. Now this is if we're gonna mix it for the entire piece, um, to keep it the same way the entire piece, but a lot of times you may want the bass to be loud in the A section or the beginning and then have it quiet down in the middle and then come back up at the end. To do that, we have to do what's called automating. And these are your automation tabs here. And automate physically means to change something in the middle of the piece. So here after, we're just gonna deal with track volume, but you can automate many different things. But notice here we get this little grid and this blue dot tells you where it's at currently. So if I were to click on this blue dot, you'd see that our base part sits at 1.2. If you go up here, you notice that it sits at 1.2. So now you just, let's say we wanted this to A, fade in. We would move this down and then we would dot here. Actually, I've created an extra step. And then we could create this fade in and I could do that on all the tracks for the fade in. By just clicking on the dot on the line and then dragging up, that will fade all these in here. Now, if you wanted to do this, I'll show you how you should do this late. If you wanted everything to fade in, how you would do it later. But now you get a fade in. Now, notice I moved it all the way up here, which means now we're clipping because we're at six. We want to keep this around zero or where it was before. So you never want to have it all the way up there. And again, now when you automate like this, you really got to watch out for clipping. Notice I spiked up here. I can just get rid of that by clicking on it. I just select it, redo it. Keep it around nine. So that's how you would do automation fades. And let's say I just wanted a sudden change. I would just put a dot here, put a dot right next to it, drag it down, put another dot here. If this was a changing section, put another dot right next to it, drag it up. So now you could, you just have a sudden change to that new volume. So that's how you would do the automation. You would automate the volume if you wanted to do it, change it throughout the piece. If you just want to mix your levels and leave it the same, you would do it over here. Again, you got to watch, make sure you're not clipping, and make sure the output here is set to where it needs to be. And the basic thing is you're deciding what is it that you want the listener to hear as the loudest part? What do you want the listener to kind of hear? But maybe it'll maybe they'll hear it, but they really won't be predominant, but it'll help enhance the piece. And, and what do you, you know, how loud should the drums be? How loud do you want your bass? But the big things are red is bad. You do not want to clip on the tracks and stay in the red at all times. Um, another effect that I want to show you guys that you can use is I talked about stacking tracks. And obviously you could stack tracks by finding the same track and bringing it back in and copying down the data. So if I go back, I forgot to reset. If I want to go techno... I must have spelled techno wrong. I did spell techno wrong. Two ends. I'm gonna slow on you people. So a techno interbase two. Then I could bring this in and have double bass and a remake for fuller sounding tracks. Now cut this down. Now an effect you can sometimes use to really pick up the bass sound is you could then transpose your loop. Actually, this is an audio track. Uh, I think you can do this. So now you have this happening an octave lower than this. It a different sound, so transposing of, of stacked loops by octaves or could really help. You can also just keep it the same and it also beefs it up, but that's something that can definitely be used to help you along. Um, the last thing I want to show you is how you would do fade ins and fade outs for your entire song. Actually, two things I want to show you to get a fade in for the entire song, you go to track, you would click on show master track, and then the master volume, the entire volume for the whole piece, comes up.
And then there you would just click here. And then you, the whole piece would fade in. And same thing for the fade out. Now notice I went all the way up to six by mistake, and I apologize for that. That means the whole piece is going to... Let's keep it at a reasonable. But you get a nice fade in. So that's how you do your fade-ins and your fades out from the entire song. Again, track, mass, show master track, and then once you get the master track, the stuff you would do up here for the individual tracks, you do down here on the master tracks. The last thing I want to show you is how to bounce your song or how to get your song on your iPhone or get it onto a CD or get it onto an uh, MP3 player. Um, and pretty much it's very simple. Once you have your mix and master and once you bring this last, this is your ending signal this is where the song will end you want to drag this i like to do this even though some you don't necessarily have to i just like to do it you drag it to the last edge of your loop end of your song put it there so that you won't get extra time on the end of your track once you do that you just go up to share you click on send song to itunes and i'm not going to do it right now because i did it this tutorial before and my computer crashed at this point but you just click share and it'll send it out to itunes for you so again, you just go share, send song to iTunes, and it'll send it out to iTunes. You can also send ringtone to iTunes, trim down a small section of your song, and you make it your ringtone on your phone, and plug it in and go from there. Once you send it to iTunes, you will then drag it from iTunes to your desktop, and then email yourself that file. That's the file you'd want to email, the iTunes file. So quickly, just to review, you have your track outputs, this is where your each volume for each track is. You want it to never go in the red or stay in the red. If it blips, it's okay. But each one of these is its own track and its own has its own volume output. This is your volume slider to adjust. You want it to start at zero and then adjust down accordingly and go up a little bit if you can, but not to clip. This is your master output. You never want this to stay in the red. You want this to be as high as possible without it clipping. So you want it to be as, la as, as far to the right as possible where it doesn't clip. If it's clipping or staying in the red, when you listen to it on your stereo, it's going to be too, it's going to be distorted and it's going to sound clipped. This is your automation tab. Click on this, bring it down. This allows you to make fade ins, fade outs, adjust things in the middle of the piece like I did here. And this is your master track. You go to track, master track, show master track. This comes up and you do the same thing with the process there. To transpose a loop, you just double click on the loop. You come to your editor, which is down here, and then you go pitch, minus 12. That's how you beef things up. Or plus 12, if you want. Don't go to any other numbers yet. We'll learn how to, but you need to know a little bit about music theory in order to make those other numbers make sense. To bounce your song or share your song, you go to share, send song to iTunes, and send it out. Please let me know if you have any questions. At this point, you are to master your, your first project. So you're going to take what you've learned in here and do it to your first project. All right. Let me know if you have any questions.